This is video 31 in our series, Analytical Mechanics. The um, playlist for all videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we're going to consider a standard textbooks problem. This, this problem is probably presented in every physics textbook there is. But we're doing it because first we'll use the traditional approach. Then we'll use another approach based upon what we learned in the past in the previous video. So what we have is some type of round object that has a rope cloud about it. And we're just simply letting the object fall as the rope around the object uncoils. And we're asking ourselves, as the object falls downward, uncoiling the rope as it goes, what is its um, acceleration as it falls down? So again, this is probably in every textbook there's out there. And what we have then when we consider the forces, there's mg and there's tension. Since it's natural to fall down, let's call the downward direction positive. So the net force that's involved is mg minus t. And of course, the net force has to be equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration as, as it accelerates downward, as it falls downward. So that's one equation that we have. We can derive another equation by considering the torque about the center of mass. And we discussed torque in some detail uh, back in video 18. Now here at the center of mass, we have two forces to consider, the weight and the tension. Now remember for the torque, it's always the cross product of some positional vector cross a force. Well, the mass is right here at the center of mass. So there's not going to be any torque at the center of mass with regard to the weight, because this is just zero here, the position vector. But for the tension there is, of course, this distance from here to where the tension exists in the rope, that's the radius of the circle, r. So what we have then for the center of mass, the torque that's involved is the radius of the circle cross the tension where the position vector points this way towards the point where the tension is. Now, the direction of it, well, let's, let's determine that. The position vector points to the left. tension goes straight up. But remember now when you take the cross product, you don't have it like this. You have to have the vectors drawn like this. Get rid of this. And now we consider how we wrap our fingers around so that this is aligned with this. When we do that, the thumb points downward. So direction of the torque about the center of mass points inward. Our fingers were wrapping around like this, so any angular acceleration that that torque produces is in this direction, and that is the positive direction here. So the torque is positive. The magnitude of the torque is just the magnitude of this the radius, times the tension, times the sine of the angle. These are perpendicular. So that is just r times t. OK, this is about, should be pretty elementary. Also remember from basic physics that when you have a torque about any point, say O, that also equals the moment of inertia about that point O times angular acceleration. 
So, for our torque about the center of mass, that also equals the moment of inertia about the center of mass times the angular acceleration. Both of these are expressions for the torque. So we can set this equal to this, and we get another equation. We have RT equals the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass times the angular acceleration. It has an angular velocity, and as it falls down, it will also have an angular acceleration. Now, we're assuming here that when our object unwinds the rope as it falls downward, that it's doing so without slipping. In other words, that we have um, a pure roll situation. And as we proved in video number 30, when you have pure roll, the linear velocity, which is the downward velocity v, that equals r, the radius, times the angular velocity. Well, now the angular acceleration, then, not the angular acceleration, the linear acceleration, that will equal r times the angular acceleration. So here, instead of angular acceleration, we could write it as the linear acceleration divided by r. So let's replace this with this. And as for the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass, that equals some fraction, say, k times r squared times m. r, of course, then, is just the radius. That's the total mass. This is some fraction. If this were a sphere, that would be 2 fifths. If this was a radius or a cylinder, then it would be 1 half. But let's just keep it in a general form, realizing that k is some fraction. So for the moment of inertia, we can substitute this for this. Then we'll have rt equals this times a divided by r. So let's do that. We have k r squared m times a divided by r. Now we have then divide both sides of the equation by r. This goes away. This is r squared. And we have that the tension equals k m a. These, of course, just cancel out. So now, up here in our first equation, for the tension, we can substitute this. So we have m g minus k m a that's the tension, equals m a. These drop out. We have minus k a. Put that over here. We have g equals a plus k times a. Or, of course, that equals a times 1 plus k, or a equals g divided by 1 plus k. So it tells us that the angular, or not the angular, the linear acceleration 
with which this falls down as the rope uncoils is our gravitational acceleration divided by 1 plus k. k being the appropriate fraction in here for the moment of inertia depending upon what kind of an object we have here. So notice that the acceleration doesn't depend on the mass of the object. It depends more on the geometry of the object. If it was a sphere, that would be two-fifths. If it was a cylinder or a mass, that would be one-half. Okay, and what we just went over here, you can probably find in any um, standard physics book. But now let's approach the same problem. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to consider the torque. Before we consider the torque with respect to the center of mass, now let's consider the torque with respect to C. Now C is the contact point between this round object and the rope. And as you saw in the previous video, video number 30, when we discussed um, a disc rolling on a surface, we can consider the system as if the disc is completely rotating about that contact point. So let's see what happens if we take now the torque with respect to point C. Or, even more, here we have this up here, point D. First thing I want to show is that if we take the torque with respect to C, what is that going to be? Well, we have a tension here, but that goes right through that point C. So that's not going to give us any torque with respect to point C. Remember, torque always involves a position vector, cross product of it with some force. Here the force is T, but it goes right through that point C, so the position vector is zero. So that's not going to give us anything. But now, if we consider, again, the torque with respect to point C, we have this mg at a distance r. So that will be r cross mg. What direction will it be in? Well, let's see. r now is not in this direction, because now, we're going to mess up our diagram here, now we're going this way. So R now points to the right. We're going from the contact point over to here. So we have R is in this direction. The weight pulls downward here. But remember, when you're taking the cross product, you put the vectors like this. And now we take the torque, we wrap the fingers around, it's pointing downward, like this. The fingers wrap around like this, so any angular acceleration is still going in the positive direction. So it's a positive number, and it's equal to, well, these are perpendicular to each other, the radius and the mg. So the magnitude of the torque is just simply r m g. Now, before we go further, we want to point out that if we took the torque, not with respect to point C, but with respect to point D, it would have the same value. Now let's see why. Here is point D. Here's the center of mass. We're taking now the torque about point D. So here's the position vector going from here to the center of mass. And then here's the weight going straight down. So the torque with respect to point D is this 
cross mg. Or, now let's take a look here, let's examine our figure carefully. We see we have an angle theta right here. That would be this angle right here. This is angle theta. Well, the angle now between L and mg, that would be pi minus theta then. This is theta. The rest of this is pi minus theta. So the torque is this times this times the sine of the angle between them. That angle is pi minus theta. But remember, the sine of pi minus theta, that's the same thing as the sine of theta. So the torque with respect to point D is just LMG times the sine of theta. Well, L times the sine of theta, L times the sine of theta is just R, the radius. So it's RMG. So interestingly, the torque about point D or the torque about point C is the same. Now, let's finish off the rest of the problem. The torque about point C is just simply then RMG and it is positive. Now we know also that the torque about point C, the contact point, as we discussed also in the previous video, that torque is equal to the moment of inertia about the contact point times the angular velocity, excuse me, the angular acceleration. As we just pointed out a few moments ago, that angular acceleration of our object, that is equal to its linear acceleration divided by the radius r. But now, what is the moment of inertia with respect to point C? Here's is where we use the parallel axis theorem. IC equals the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus the distance of this from the center of mass squared, that's just the radius squared, times the mass of the object, times the mass of our disk or sphere, whatever it is. So that's what this is. So let's substitute here for this. And, well, what is this? That is, we're just writing it generically as k r squared m. k is one half if this is a cylinder, k is two fifths if that's a sphere. So now we have that this is equal to k r squared m this is this. Here we have k r squared m. Plus m r squared. Times a over r. Okay. This right here, that's the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass plus the distance that this is from the center of mass squared, r squared, times the total mass. This right here is the parallel axis theorem. We derived that in video um, 19D, I believe it was. So let's see what we have. We have m r squared, k r squared, a over r. So let's see where this takes us. We see that this cancels and 
this cancels. And this was also equal to, remember, RMG. So let's put RMG in place of this. Now, this already canceled here. These were squared. Now, this cancels. The M's cancel. And we have G equals K plus 1. times a. And this, of course, is exactly the same equation that we derived before when we were considering, though, taking the torque about the center of mass. Here we took the torque instead about this contact point c. But we do it, and of course, for the acceleration, it's going to be g divided by 1 plus k. It gives us, of course, exactly the same answer. So. We just wanted to show you that here is a standard textbook problem, uh, but we wanted to solve it in two different ways. First, by taking, considering the torque about the center of mass. That's where they do it in most textbooks. But also, you can solve the problem by considering the torque about the contact point C.